Thank you. Uh, it's great to be here. As Im jong uk Nim said, uh, I am very comfortable in English. I speak very good English. And I also speak very good slow English. So I will be speaking some slow English and maybe throwing in a little Korean here and there, okay? I'm very excited to be with you guys today. Um, I've never done a presentation like this. All of the presentations that I've done, uh, have been like about companies that I've been involved with. You can see I'm wearing my Weebly shirt, but I'm not really here to talk about Weebly. Um, I also worked at Evernote, and I'll talk a little bit about that, but I'm here to talk about uh, us, right? Like uh, Koreans in Silicon Valley. Now, as he said, in my mind, I am half Korean. In my mind. I want to be, right? I love Korea. So what I wanted to do is first explain why I love Korea, why Korea, and then talk a little bit about some ideas and observations I have of Silicon Valley and some of my Korean friends who have come to Silicon Valley. So that's what I'll be talking about today. Okay, oops. I hit the wrong button. I go, Moteo. Okay. Um, so just a little bit about me. My jungong was Hangugo. And I I as he said, I was a Songyo sign in Korea and Kute Nun Tokakoroso Pewos Nida Hangugo Hangumar Kute Nun Chadas Nida Kute Nun Chikori Mankaman Handago Haseo Chigaman Chikori Pan Heo. So I've forgotten a lot of Tano and Moonbop and all that stuff, but I hope that you will realize that I love your language and I love your, your culture and everything about Korea. So after my mission, I wanted to very Bali, very quickly get to Jorop. So I said, how can I do this? Ah, Hangumalo Yuchang Koi Yuchang Heo. Kurasa Kunyong if I if I do it as a a Jungong, I can get through school very quickly. So I did undergraduate as Hangugo. But it turned out to be really hard. You have to learn a lot of Hancha. And I don't like Hancha because we have the perfect language. Sejong Tewang, right? Like created, like the perfect language for written language. It's so easy to learn Korean, learn how to read Korean. In fact, in Silicon Valley, I teach classes to Weigugindul on how to read Korean. I can teach any Weigugin how to read Korean in one hour. Heo. Aju chuaeo. Tebakieo. Hekjameo jumma. Okay, so. After that, I got my MBA because I knew I was going to get my MBA for business. I wanted to do business in the internet side. And so I got that as well. And I've founded uh, two companies uh, myself, one of which, Shilpeheta. I founded it at the wrong time, 2008, where I couldn't get funding for the second round. But another one that I founded in San Diego is still going very strong with 150 employees. So I'm happy about that one. After that, after being a Changupja, I joined Evernote and led, as he said, the Asia Pacific region. And then after that, I went to Weebly, which is where I'm at currently. And I'm doing the global international strategy for Weebly. So that's me, that's what I do. Um, as he said, I really am half Korean in my mind. Uh, this morning, I had kimchi uh, jjigae uh, for achim shiksa, right? Like, and it's funny because whenever I come to Korea, I always eat Korean food for achim shiksa, but all of my Korean friends want to get pastries at like Dunkin' Donuts or Starbucks. I say, no, 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 we're Korean. We eat Korean food, right? So uh, I really believe this, and I, and I love Korea. So. This is me with hair. Morikarak isoseo. Moshicho. Kurucho. 
This is when I was 19, as Im jong Hook nim said, I was a sung sa at that time. When I first, we don't get to choose the country we go to. We don't choose. So I opened a letter, and it said, Seoul, South Korea. And I said, wow, where is that? <laughs> I didn't know exactly. I knew Korea, but I didn't know where it was on a map. So I found out where Korea was. I came to Korea. This is actually, um, does anyone know any guesses? What Musun san here? Sorak san aninde? No? It, it's Bukjoke. Tobong san. Tobong san here. I love Dung san here. It's great. So I, I came to Korea, learned the language, and later I was able to share Korea with my family. This is, this is my family. I married a great American girl, but she doesn't help me with Korean. So my Korean kind of thought um, But I have three kids. My son loves Korean food. The girls can't take the spice, but my son eats kimchi jjigae all day long. He always asks me, Tteokbokki, make some kimchi jjigae, because I make it at home. So I brought them to Seoul last year and told them the story about Sejong Daewang and everything that he did here in Korea. But the reason I love Korea is you have a very deep history, very deep language, both written and spoken, and also just an amazingly deep culture. This is something that for me is different. Coming from America, we don't have as deep of roots as you do here in Korea. So I, after learning about it, ha just love Korea for that reason. So um, when you think about language, I want to talk about language really quickly. These are uh, you know, things that we're familiar with. From an American perspective, right? In America, when you leave a friend to, to part ways, we say, take it easy, rest. It's essentially saying, take a break, right? What do, what do we say in Korea? Suguaseo, work hard, like, get it done, right? That's Korea, right? That's a big difference. Many other countries are like, take it easy, relax. But one thing I noticed about Korea, I was here in Kuship Il Nyondoe, 91년도 부터 93년도까지 여기서 살았습니다. 서울에 강원도 원주에서도. And so I went in the Shigol, which was awesome. And I I was really impressed with just the concept of 수고하다. 수고하십시오. Right? And then you have 우리 우리나라. Right? How cool is it that we're all 가족? Right? Like we we think as 한민족이다. That's really cool. We don't have that as much in America. And then another one is the history of Korea is very difficult. Wars, we had the Japanese occupation of Korea. Uh, wars going very far back in history, right? So to realize, and, and I've noticed, we don't say this anymore, but when I was here in 1991, Kushib <laughs> Jaju irin greeting hasail. Shiksa hasail sale. We would always say pop mogo sale. Right? That says something about the yaksa, about the history of, of what Udinara has, has been through, right? That's important to me. It's, it's an interesting thing. And then also Anyang Haseo is the same thing. Are you in peace? Right? That, that's interesting. And to me, that is really cool to learn deeply about Korea. So these are things I noticed about Korea that I knew Korea was going to be a big deal. In 1991, Korea was, was kind of like hadn't become big yet, right? You had the Olympics, and st everyone was still sugo hago keso seo. And I noticed a work ethic among Koreans. So let me tell you a story. I call, you guys call these super now? It, yenare, we got kage rago haseo. Kucho, kage arayo, kurumar? Yeah. 
So when I lived in Kangwondo Wanju, we would go to the corner kage. And there was an ajima that every morning she was sweeping, sweeping in front of this, making it perfect, beautiful, right? It wasn't really fancy, but it was clean, and she had pride in what she was doing. And I, I remember that work ethic. And I, I remember thinking to myself, Korea is going to be amazing, right? Because people work so hard and have pride in what they're doing. That's a very good thing about Korea. Another good thing about Korea that I noticed is Kyoyuk. So I, I came from America where we have weekends. The kids here, I noticed when I was a Sangyosa, we'd try to get them to come to church and they'd be like, I have to study. Especially if they were like in high school, right? So the education, the, the cultural importance of education, I thought that's going to help Korea become a, a very influential and important nation in the world. And sure enough, it has. Um, also in Korea, people want to just sanggong, right? And this is a cultural difference between Silicon Valley and Korea, right? Like, we want to sanggong as well, but we realize if you shilpe, kenchanta, tohedeo, right? So that's a little bit of a, a cultural difference, but I always noticed about Korea that people want and have a, a motivation, a big motivation to be successful, which is important for any nation. So that's, my, that's what I learned from Korea. And now I want to talk a little bit about Silicon Valley. But I don't agree with how you spell Silicon Valley. But Im Jong-uk nim, pakwaya deo ige? Right? Yeah, Silicon Valley. <laughs> Silicon Valley is a very weird place. It is very diverse. There's people from everywhere. There's ideas that are from here to there, very mixed up ideas. But that is part of the magic of Silicon Valley, is it's so mixed. Uh, and, and if I was trying to do business uh, in the world, I think it's important to always look for other people's ideas, other people's perspectives, to try to come up with the idea that's going to really work. So in Silicon Valley, we put a high premium, a, a high importance. Junior Hango is just doing things. So I know a lot of people that have perfect resume, right? Like you're going to find a job, you want that perfect resume. I've noticed more and more, we don't pay as much attention to the resume. The resume, they all start to look very similar because we have many qualified, many right? So education is not the only differentiating factor when looking for a job. Now, my CEO at Weebly, when he interviews someone for a job, he asks them what their interests are outside of work. And he looks for someone that has any interest, but that goes deep in that interest. So he looks for someone that doesn't just like watching movies, but that can tell him about cinematography and in a deep way why movies have changed their lives, right? So um, I sat down with a Korean friend of mine the other day and, and she told me that she noticed that a lot of people in Silicon Valley have many more interests outside of work than just their work. And I think that gives you the ability to generate ideas that you might not think of otherwise. Um, another concept that I think about when I think about Koreans in Silicon Valley is if you have something to say, please say it. Sometimes we think, oh, 대표님이다. 
malande, <laughs> right? You, you know, you might be afraid to say something uh, to the tapionim that's different, right? Um, my father used to have this saying, this like soktam kind of, in his office. Um, 두 명이항,항상동의하면둘다있을필요가없다 right? So if we always agree, we only need one of us, right? We need to disagree. We need to have different ideas and exchange those ideas, even with the tapio name, right? So that's, a, that's an important concept. Now, what makes this work is a value. This is a value we have at Weebly, and I thought this was really cool. If you have respect or, or uh, Jong Jung, and you have Jong Jik together, then you can trust each other. You get Shilwe. You can trust that your comment is not to hurt me, it's to help me and give me better ideas, right? So this equation is very important to make sure that you can share your ideas in a constructive way to make things better. This is an important thing for us at Weebly. The last thing I want to talk about, and I think I'm doing generally okay, three and, three and a half minutes, I'm doing good. So the last thing I want to talk about for Koreans in Silicon Valley is the concept of sell yourself. I think as a culture, we are very kyomsonhada, right? Very kyomsonhada. And in America, it's a little bit different. It's, it's, people in America don't like someone who brags and talks only about themselves. I'm not saying to do that. But don't be afraid to tell people what you have done, what have you accomplished, right? And I think of, does anyone know? His name, I don't know his Korean name. Alex Ha, you know Alex Ha. Ha de you, ha de you name. Un, un, yeah. Ha de un, I go moteo. I need to see it in Korean. But this is a good friend of mine, uh, and I sat down with him, and he told me his story. How he came to Silicon Valley, he didn't know any English. Still, he has a very thick accent. It's almost like Saturi, but in English, right? So sometimes it's a little hard to understand, but you know what? He's very successful because he can tell his story about how he's been successful and what he brings to a company. So he is very good at selling himself in a very Kyomsun Han manner, right? So this is a skill that I think all of us need to learn. Think about your story and how to tell it in such a way that someone would want to hire you to be able to do what you did, right? To have that capability on their team. This is something that uh, I've seen him do very well I've asked him for help on this as well, because I think he's great. You don't have to be perfect in English. You don't have to worry about your accent if you have an accent. If you accomplish things, you will be successful if you can tell that story. So he was able to tell me about an impossible task of coming to America, not knowing English, and needing to grow a business for a Korean company. He had to just figure things out, which is a very good skill set that a lot of people are looking for. People that can figure things out. There's many smart people, but very few people can just figure stuff out and make it happen, right? That's what startups are looking for. And then he would fail, correct, do it again, correct, do it again until he saw the path to success. And he was able to grow that Korean company in the US bigger than the company was in Korea. So it's a very, very cool story. He scaled it. So 
I have eight seconds to say thank you. I'm ha- I, I ended right on time. But seriously, it's, it's great to be here and speak with you guys. Um, I love Korea. I hope you can tell that. And uh, I wish you all the best success going forward in everything that you do. Thank you.